So I, I am from a, a Migration Institute of Finland, but I have been working with regional economic development over 10, 20 years at the University of Tampere mostly uh, in, in, in different angles, mostly linking this development to migration to some to somehow usually to migration of uh, labor force or skilled people, but also from different angles. And also the presentation today is about um, migration and development in the context of SDGs. And it's a bit different approach how to localize uh, SDGs to local development and uh, future of the local uh, development. Uh, so it could be seen as a kind of a problem based localization because migration uh, uh, at the moment or population decline is in Finland when we, uh, we are now talking about small and mid sized towns and rural areas is really a key problem for development because basically bluntly we do not have enough labor force to maintain fully functional economies in these areas. So it has been coming a very long time, but now it's kind of a increasing uh, and becoming worse, uh, accelerating pace. Uh, and so the so the migration is at the moment extremely important element of uh, development, especially almost basically every other region in Finland than the capital region and a couple of biggest city regions uh, beyond that. But all the other regions are suffering from this. And when we talk about migration, I would like to use this uh, definition by Castles that migration research should be more embedded to interpretation of, of contemporary society and processes as, as social transformation. And so it's part of the global change and it should be a part of that discussion. So it's they are not cause and effect uh, uh, like migration and development, but they are part of the same process. And they are really kind of a egg and chicken problem, which comes first, uh, development or, or migration. And actually, you cannot say uh, either of them to be a first. But I think there are certain dynamics in this development. For, for example, when we talk about the human capital, you can start from research, development and innovation cap capacity of the region, how they are able to create higher value from that human capital. And then you need uh, capabilities to create business models and new markets in order to create growth from that uh, kind of a refined knowledge or human capital. And that will create more regional value chains and ecosystems that are actually the key attractors or for, for the people to come. Uh, especially when we talk about the labor force or work, working age people. So that creates attractiveness and actual concrete channels for people. And then you need this integration and absorptive capacities to, to integrate people to regional economy and regional businesses. So basically it's, it's part of the same process. And I think it's when we talk about migration and development, they are part of the parcel of the same thing. So I think often, especially there's a lot of discussion about how attractive some places are and uh, how, how they are able to attract people. But I think that's kind of a misleading approach or wording of things. And I would rather talk about the evolving dynamics of migration system. Usually when we talk about attractive places, we talk about uh, jobs and study places, which are often the most important and uh, quality of life issues and social networks and these three in different forms are basically called as somehow attractive qualities of the place. But I would say that they are rather tight dynamics of migration systems that are quite uh, limited. To, uh, so people are not moving anywhere where there are the best opportunities for them, but rather they are moving within these uh, migration systems. And those systems are something that we should be able to change if we are trying to solve this problem of uh, of uh, declining population in these regions. Uh, and uh, these are bit, uh, but I, I refer here to Pegwell, who has been talking about the uh, migration systems, which is kind of an evolving concept. It's not very, very well defined yet, but there are a couple of things that should be maybe mentioned that there is a certain form for that migration. There are flows, people coming and going. They are linked to certain places. Mostly they are not going 
everywhere from everywhere, but uh, for certain region there are usually a few few places where people go and few places where people come mostly. So you can kind of recognize this kind of a dynamics uh, national, but uh, domestic migration, which is actually more important for the for the economic development and international migration. And in this case, I'm talking about mostly uh, domestic migration. Um, so then the more important is maybe the system dynamics which merely refers that this system itself creates something new. It creates new institutions and uh, new kind of a norms for migration and development uh, as it as it works. And this is uh, we have different kind of systems. We have learning system, innovation systems, and everything uh, uh, can be analyzed from system perspective. And then it's always important to try to figure out how they actually uh, uh, impact the development of the system itself like here in new businesses or new business culture or lifestyles may may emerge and uh, uh, and they again have impact on the migration flows and so forth but these are basically the, the dynamics and the form are important for the for the system and then of course the boundaries that um, elements within the system will change and be changed by the behavior of the system. That was kind of a key message of the previous slide. And uh, then we also have environment. That's so the system doesn't include everything, but there's environment. And they are all those objects or factors that feedback mechanisms cannot really, uh, you cannot really identify the feedback mechanisms. So we are cannot, uh, for example, uh, climate change has a lot of impact what we do and uh, so on, and, and we can try to impact on that, but we cannot really change that. But within the system, uh, uh, if we talk about the migration and in development within that system, there are all the all the objects that we can really kind of uh, try to impact and gain some feedback uh, that has uh, really an impact on the form of the form of the system. So they are different. It's always important to define the system and its limits. Um, and basically we have placed this migration and development. I think if you have been reading Gills and other who talk about this social transformation and especially this now, of course, this sustainable sustainability transitions from moving from one system to another, we can uh, apply this uh, kind of a framework also to migration. And again, there on the top, you have a landscape where where are those macro level things that you cannot really have impact. It's kind of environment, population decline, de dependency ratio, urbanization, digitalization, sustainability, meaning that we have a new kind of uh, economic frameworks that, are, that, that we are talking about now. These SDGs, they are, refi uh, they are defining how the economy works at these days. And of course, COVID, but that's guy maybe already passed more or less. But we have this landscape level, which creates a pressure for existing re regime. And here in the regime, we have a kind of a status quo. We have a, a current institutions and practices that are going on. And uh, they are also this kind of a subsystems like culture, labor and study markets and social networks, and living environment or quality of life things, and, and maybe technology as a separate thing, which all have a important role in in uh, mobility of people and these are kind kind of established practices and if we want to change that system for example in domestic uh, migration in most european countries there is a lot of concentration which is based on these facts and these these uh, subsystems and also broader politics uh, and economy that people tend to concentrate to certain biggest uh, city regions and they are again international level tend to uh, focus uh, on to concentrate on a few fewer and fewer uh, places around the world, uh, especially when we talk about the uh, educated and skilled people. So it's it's not it's it's a system. It's not a, so much about the attractiveness of those places, but it is how the whole migration system is created along with uh, kind of a current way of uh, developing or the yeah, current uh, socio-economic system and the plot and the bottom of the picture you have these maybe, maybe, well, social innovations that may change 
things and uh, existing regime uh, basically if they are compatible with those pressures coming from the landscape to be plumped to where it's very much simplified so we have this identity business living uh, environment and internationalization related uh, innovations that could be tried in order to change the existing regime but this is kind of a framework for, for this approach and then very quickly some results uh, some um some something about the research itself uh, so the question was uh, migration how migration impact on regional development and vice versa and our spatial unit and uh, the regional challenge is uh, can be found from the south of Botnia from Finland and uh, you can see the problem is that they are losing it's kind kind of a not very populated area like 150,000 people, but uh, from 2000 to 2012, this whole county, whole region was losing about 500 people in total, while during the last 10 years they lost more than 5000 people and this is accelerating. And actually the uh, central city, the midside city, say now give it 60,000 people is doing actually quite well and growing, but uh, many others are doing not very well and the whole region as such is, is going, going down with this uh, population decline in the future. So this is kind of a problem and the context. And this is a very common problem in most Nordic countries. And our target groups, we, we, our data was collected among the students, domestic migrants and retired migrants, working aids and international migrants. So a lot of uh, questionnaires and, and uh, interviews, 1,500 uh, answers altogether to questionnaires and uh, interviews done more than 50 or like 60 interviews but the basically how to apply this approach to regional economic development is this is all now summarized to this one picture i'm not going to go any details to the time but you can see that uh, there is a form this is all the uh, households moving from the region and the region between the 2012 and 2018 and it's very clear that there is a pattern there is a form Mostly they are moving to Tampere and Helsinki, the biggest city regions where there are thickest labor market and the most uh, university uh, study places and also all in Uvascula. Actually, all the cities that they are red, where they are losing population are university cities, university towns, and they are gaining from this green area, which is mostly kind of a rural area. So this is kind of a form of the, of the you know, migration system and the dynamics when we ask why what why this is happening, to put it very bluntly, people have to go because if they want to have a jobs or if they want to study. So this is kind of a core of this uh, migration system and dynamics running that system. But uh, how this all is related to related to regional economic development in terms of migration is that these dynamics of migration system are emerging mostly from the local economy and value creation and capabilities to create value. And these are uh, uh, kind of a focal points in local uh, University of Applied Sciences, and uh, they are very much similar what they have in in, in University Center in St. Eoki. So there are three kind of areas where they, are, where, where they have uh, capabilities and they are trying to uh, improve these capabilities and, and, and renew the local economy. And of course, when we look at these sustainable development goals, it's quite easy to find uh, these corresponding um, uh, elements from there. And uh, the idea for the to solve the migration problem, actually the population decline, is to improve these three main core areas of innovation and, and business in the region by creating more well-defined SDG platforms that could enhance the business and innovation in these fields because uh, we can see that this SDGs has created also the huge business opportunities and here is a one evaluation of each of these uh, goals like affordable and clean energy there is a 2.3 trillion USA dollars business globally and one trillion is 1000 billion dollars so it's huge also it's zero hunger which fits very well to, to this Senegal region. There is a 3.3 trillion dollar, dollars uh, businesses and good health and well-being again, almost 2 trillion US dollars businesses. So idea is that uh, changing 
this migration system, you kind of put your SDGs, you take your emerging innovation ecosystems that they are developing in the region, which includes, of course, university businesses and other actors and uh, kind of a policies, innovation economy, uh, ecosystem policies, and foster the SDGs in this field. And that's one element, how you try to change this migration system by creating new uh, new functions and kind of emerging uh, uh, opportunities for people who who would like to, who potentially uh, move to place or away from there. So this is very, very shortly a bit complex approach, but I think this is a migration and development has to be combined more kind of a profound way than it is at the moment when we are talking about mostly push and pull factors, which are extremely old, coming from 40s, I think. And I, we should integrate these approaches, the system approaches, how, how to say, how to change uh, regional uh, business and innovation ecosystems and how to change the migration system of the regions that is feeding them and other way around. So thank you and uh, looking forward to your comments.